like half of you would have been on Zoom, like watching me do this, and the other half of you would be would have been here, and it was like horrific and terrible. Okay, and we're gonna hide this. Okay. All right, so like I said, protein synthesis just means that we're making something. And in this case, what we're making is protein. So synthesis is making or building. And in this case, it's a protein. So um, building protein. Now you might be like, why is protein so important that it's like the central dogma of biology. Like, why do we actually care about making proteins that much? And the reason we care about it that much is that everything that you can see about a person is a protein that's being made and that's why they look that way. So like your skin color, your hair color, the texture of your hair, your eye color and things inside your body too. It's like the like types of red and white blood cells you have and like all of the different things that literally make you who you are is just a protein that's getting made. And the instructions to make the protein is your, yes, your DNA. Your DNA is the instructions to make the protein. So like when you think about what are someone's actual traits, mm -hmm. their actual traits are proteins. And that's why it matters that they get made the right way. Okay, all right. So protein synthesis happens in two steps that we're going to break down today, and they are called transcription and translation. And I like to think about this like literally like you would think about these words, what they mean in English. Do you guys know what it means to like transcribe something or what a transcription is? Yeah, it has to do with writing. So it has to do with like taking something that someone spoke to you and putting it into written words. So like on your phone, if you have an iPhone, when someone leaves you a voicemail, which probably doesn't happen very often, but if they do, you can see the transcription and sometimes like it can't do it. So it will say unable to transcribe this message. Have you seen that before? That's what transcription is. So it's keeping things in English, like it's still gonna be in the English language, but it's taking like one form of English and putting it into another form of English from speaking to writing. And that's what transcription is like in the cell too. It's taking DNA and it's putting into RNA. So we're still like speaking nucleic acid, like we would be speaking English, but it's just a different form. So that's what transcription is. And I'm gonna say that it is DNA, code is changed into an RNA code. And what this is, is it's still like the language, I'm gonna put this in quotes, stays the same. And the language is nucleic acids. So basically like we're speaking in A's, T's, C's and G's for this first step, it's staying the same. Okay, step two is translation. And what does it mean if you are translating something just like, like what does translating mean? Go ahead, answer. Exactly. And that's what this is gonna be in the cell too. So we're gonna take our nucleic acid language, which we have as RNA now, and we're going to convert it to a whole different language, which is the language of proteins and amino acids. That's what translation is going to be. So the like biology answer to this is RNA codes for proteins. And what we're doing here is we're changing the language from nucleic acid. to protein. So now when you're trying to just like remember the order of the steps, because I know these words sound pretty similar to each other, you can remember that translation has an L, L for later, or L for last. Okay, just gonna make note of that also. That translation has an L and L for 
last or later. So, right, so construction first and then transition. Okay. Before we go any further on this, we're going to talk about um, the differences between DNA and RNA because we haven't done that since I think we maybe did it a little bit like when we did biomolecules, but not very much. So we're going to like do that in more detail now. Are you ready? All right. So coming over here to this little like blue section. Let's fill in the DNA stuff first. So we know the shape of DNA is called a what? Double helix. Which looks like your DNA model looks. So it's got two backbones like this that cross each other. And then in the middle are the bases, right? I'm not gonna draw like each side. I'm just gonna draw them like bound together like this. That's what we got for DNA. And then for RNA, does anyone know what the shape is? It's very similar to DNA, but instead of having two sides, it only has one. So it's a single helix. So what we've got now is instead of having two, we have just one squiggle, one backbone, and we're having just our bases now stick off the side because there's nothing for them to bind to. So they're literally just like sticking off, waiting to have something bind to them. And something is gonna bind to them, just not another strand. Okay. And then what do you know about the size of DNA? Like, is there a lot of it or is there a little of it? Yeah, so the size of DNA is very large. It's all your genes. The size of RNA is small. And it's going to be one gene at a time. So one RNA is for one gene. And that's it. And then in DNA, what are our four bases? You can just yell them. Awesome job. I'm just going to write ATCG, but you're very right. So ATCG. And then in RNA, there's one different base that gets swapped, which I don't know the reason why it just is that way. So in RNA, it's A, U, C, G. And basically, it's exactly like it would be in DNA. So A and U are partners, and C and G are always partners. And we already know in DNA, A and P are partners and C and G are partners. Remember at Cardinal Gibbons if you forget. Okay, so that's the main difference between DNA and RNA. There's one other difference, which is that RNA has a different sugar than DNA. Do you remember what the sugar is in DNA? Yeah, deoxyribose, guess what it is in RNA? Just ribose, yeah. So. I'll just make a note of that just because. So RNA is ribose, sugar, thanks, Ruth. Yeah. And DNA is deoxyribose sugar. But in general, the structure is the same. So like the nucleotides that you guys built for your DNA model last week, they would look the same in RNA. It just wouldn't have another side. It just would have been like one side without another partner. But the deoxyribose and ribose look the same. They both are pentagons. Okay. Okay. Now let's talk about the types of RNA because there's only one type of DNA, it's the CNA, but there's actually three types of RNA that we're going to talk about. So coming down here. All right. Types of RNA get abbreviated by the like first letter of what they actually are. So mRNA stands for messenger.
tRNA stands for transfer. And rRNA stands for ribosomal. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little detail on what each of these things are. So messenger RNA, its job is to actually take the message out of, where does the DNA live? Nucleus. The DNA can't leave the nucleus. Do you want to guess why? Too big. Yep. So the DNA is massive. Remember I told you there's like 10 billion miles of DNA in your body. So it can't get out of the nucleus. It has to use this like smaller version to take it out of the nucleus and that's messenger RNA. So this is one gene of information that can leave the nucleus. Okay. So it's going to take the genetic code out of the nucleus and to somewhere else. Any guesses where it's going to take it? Remember, we're making a protein. Yeah, ribosomes. Ribosomes are the part of the cell that makes the protein. And today we're literally learning just why they are that. Why are they making the protein? Okay. So now what's going to happen with transfer RNA is it's going to transfer something. And what it's going to transfer is an amino acid. Do you remember those? Cool. So what they do is they stick together like Legos to make a protein. The RNA has a specific code that matches to a specific amino acid. And we're gonna talk about how that works in just a minute, but it's gonna put the exact right amino acid on the chain based on what the mRNA code said. So this is gonna add new amino acids. specific to what the mRNA says. And then the last one is ribosomal RNA. And this one is not as big as the other two because it's just what makes up ribosomes. Like ribosomes are actually made of RNA. And that's what this is. So this is making up or makes up the structure of ribosomes. Okay. Now that we know this, we can use that to help us kind of go into detail of how these things are actually working. So we're gonna scroll back over to the side once you're done with this. We're all good. All right, and come up here to the start of transcription. There's a one next to it. All righty, so the location of transcription where it happens in the cell, I guess, Remember, transcription is DNA to RNA. Exactly. So it has to be in the nucleus because the DNA is never going to leave the nucleus. So this happens in the nucleus. Now, when's the only time that it would not happen in the nucleus? What type of cell would it be? Yeah, good. It would be a bacteria or a prokaryotic cell because they don't have a nucleus. So their DNA is just in the cytoplasm floating around. But for us and our cells, nucleus. Okay. Let's do practice. So throughout the process of transcription, just like with DNA replication, it's a bunch of enzymes that are coming through, unzipping the DNA and adding in new nucleotides. But instead of the new nucleotides being DNA, this time the new nucleotides are RNA that are getting stuck in, okay? So if our DNA is A, T, T, C, D, C, come down here and write down what would the mRNA be? And remember, it's a, B, C, D. What does A match with an RNA? U. T matches with A, because A still exists. Bs match with 
E's and G's match with C. Good. Go for it. Okay, what you get? U, A, A, B, C, C. Good. Now this is a single strand. This is just the basis that we've written down, but there is a backbone attached to it, right? And this now can leave the nucleus. And travel to B, which I forgot to erase, it's already on there, ribosome. Now, one thing that I want to tell you is that as soon as the mRNA starts to leave the nucleus, there are enzymes in your cells that will start to break it down right away. So as soon as it leaves, it's actually getting like digested by the just like cell, like parts of the cell in the cytoplasm that are like ready to digest it, break it down. So in our cells, actually a protective cap gets added to the RNA to make sure that it doesn't like degrade too much. And that's called a poly A tail. So what guess what base gets like stuck on the end? Which, which letter is gonna get stuck on the end? Yeah, A's. Yeah, a whole bunch of A's gets added to the end of this RNA if this is our mRNA. Because as soon as it leaves, enzymes are like little scissors are gonna come behind. They're gonna be like snip, 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 snip off the end. So because there's a protective A tail, it just snips off the A's for a long time until it actually gets to the gene where it starts to like break it down. Okay, Anna Claire, what's your question? Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna add here is like in between these two steps. So in between the mRNA gets modified for protection. And um, that is called a poly A tail, which literally just means many A's. So what that would look like is if our mRNA was U, A, A, B, C, G, it would then be like A, 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 dot, 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 like a whole bunch of A's stuck on the end so that it would like that. It also gets a cap at the front that's a bunch of G's, and that is kind of like the starter for um, the next step of this transcription. So, I'll just say also get these at the start to signal beginning. So I'm just going to put two G's there. G G. Oh, but three. And one last thing that I can't really fit in here about modification, but it's like so fun that I have to tell you about it, is you actually have parts of your genes that don't code for anything. They don't code for proteins. And it's very weird and scientists like still don't really understand why they even exist, but they're called non-coding regions. And so your cell has enzymes that recognize this is a non-coding region of this gene, like we don't want it because if we take it to the next step, we'll start to like add in the wrong amino acids because they're not supposed to be part of the gene really. So they'll come in and they'll cut out the non-coding parts of the gene, which is, um, they're called introns. And the scissors that cut them out are called SNRPs, which is like my favorite, like they're actually called that. So there's, Sometimes earlier this year, you guys saw, I think there was like a little smurf sitting here. I don't know where he went um, with scissors on him. And he is there because it sounds like, I don't know where he went. I'll try to find him like as it working, but yeah. Oh yeah. 
Um, so let's see, I'm gonna add this. I'm just gonna go like way over here just to put on here. It would be like a bonus question if I asked you about it, but I'm just gonna say like part of mRNA modification is removing non-coding parts of the DNA, which are called AKA introns using um, big S, little n, R, big R, big N, big P. NERP, and this is pronounced NERP. So then when you're left with your RNA, so after this, RNA, mRNA only contains the necessary info, um, which is called, I'll say a gene, AKA exons is what they're called. So the exons are what will actually exit the nucleus because they're the actual information that we actually wanted to have. And the last thing I'll say about this modification is that this doesn't happen in bacteria because they don't have any SNRP. So they just have like whatever gets goes through transcription also goes through translation. Like they don't have a chance to snip it off and like change it. So if there's a mutation in the DNA or something, then it automatically gets transferred to the protein. But we can like snip snip before we do it. Okay, ready for part two. All right, so now we have our um, gene that's been trimmed and protected and ready to go. So we can go on now to step two, which I already filled in for you where this happens, which is the ribosome. So our mRNA has arrived. And now what we have to do to figure this out is we have to use this chart down here. And this is called a codon chart. And sometimes they're round. There are different like versions of this, but this is the one I like to use. What is going to happen here is that each three letters of mRNA is called a codon, which I think is written for you over here. Yeah. The three bases of mRNA is called a codon, but it's spelled C O D O N. And this is pronounced code on. Okay. And then three bases of tRNA that match to a codon is just called an anti-codon. So anti-codon. And what happens, how this works is that each tRNA molecule only can bind to one specific amino acid. So for example, here's your mRNA down here, the mRNA is a strip. It's going through the ribosome and it literally like threads through it. The ribosome has like a little hole in it, like a tunnel, and the mRNA passes through. And what you have is your here's your little code. And we'll look at this one, AAA. This would be the codon. So right here, codon. And then this, you, you, you. This would be the anti codon. And do you see how we said already A's match with U's in RNA? So that's why only this anti codon, only this tRNA will match to this AAA. Is that making sense? Okay. So then what happens is this UUU always carries this specific amino acid, LYS, which is lysine. And it's a molecule but it only will ever attach to UUU. 
this one, CUA, this will only ever carry this specific amino acid. So that's how it knows to put the right one in the chain because the mRNA said, we need this exact one to go right here. Yeah? Okay, let's try it. So if we look at this, our mRNA is GAA, GCU. So each one of these three letters is a codon. Codon, codon. So this is two codons. And each codon will be for one amino acid. So we're gonna have only two amino acids if we have two codons. So looking at this, how we do this chart is, start over here where it says first letter. Our first letter was G. So I'm gonna come down here to the Gs. And now I'm only looking at the Gs. So this row here. Okay, like this. And then for your second letter, you're looking at A, because that's what it said in our codon. So you come up here to where it says second letter, you need a different color. And you're coming down now in the A's. So that means we're looking at the place where these two things intersect. First letter D, second letter A. So that means we're looking at only this box here, right? Or two. And then we've got to look at our third letter, which our third letter was A. So we're only looking at this third letter because we are only looking in the Gs, okay? So our third letter is A. So we're coming over here. The amino acid we want is the one where all three intersect. So the answer is glutamate, which whenever you write amino acids, you can just write the first three letters. So in this case, GLU. Okay, now let's try the second one. So our second codon is GCU. So again, we're starting in the Gs. So we're looking at this. Our second letter is C, so we're looking at this. So now that means we're looking at only this box here. And our third letter is U, which means our answer is alanine, right? Because that's the place where all three intersect, GCU. So now for this one, you would write ALA. Okay, now I'm gonna let you guys try one all by yourself. So come over here, start with, oh wait, erase the amino acids, make yourself do it, sorry. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Okay, so start with your DNA, change it to RNA, that's transcription. Go ahead and do that first. And then use the chart to try to find the amino acids.
غزالی If you're ready, you can check your answers up here. You get this? Okay, so if you didn't get this, check your mRNA. Make sure that you use U's and not T's. If you use T's, you can't do this chart. So this is like a helpful thing if you're doing this ever on like a test or quiz. If you get to this and you're like, wait, why are there no T's? It's because you put T's where they shouldn't be and they should have been used. So go back and check your RNA. And then for your amino acids, you're just using the chart to find the intersection. So if for example, A, A, A is lysine. And that's how you get that, okay? Now for this one, the tRNA, the tRNA has to match to the mRNA because that's what's going to like stick the amino acid actually on, right? So to get your tRNA, you're just flipping this back. Basically, it's going to be the same as the DNA, except for anything in the DNA that was a T. Now it's going to be a U because there's no T's in RNA. Does that make sense? Sort of. So how this actually is working is this UUU is carrying this molecule lysine and this molecule ACG is carrying this cysteine and this CUA is carrying this um, ASP. So just one more time, this process here is transcription. This process here is translation. Okay, and just a star, always use the mRNA, a little m, to do a codon chart. So what that means is like, don't use your tRNA to find the answers because they won't be right. Use the mRNA to find the, the answers, okay? Okay, I just wanna show you the picture of the overall process and then we're gonna do a little activity with this called taco synthesis. And we're gonna go here and look at this. This is at the top. Also, the Amoeba Sisters video is linked for you if you want to watch it. It's optional to watch it, but if you feel like confused, it's pretty helpful. So, looking at this, here's your DNA in the nucleus. Here's your RNA getting made. So, what's happening here is this. I'm going to do the DNA in yellow. This is the DNA. It got unzipped. Do you remember what enzyme does the unzipping? Yep, helicase. So this is the DNA. And the RNA, I'm going to put in blue. So this RNA is getting made. And see how it's only using one side of the DNA to do that? That's how it works. It only uses one side. So this will be your RNA. And then once it's done, here it is the same thing that was just in blue up above. That. And then this is where you would have like the modification. So this step right here is like SNRP, editing, and poly A tail added. Then it's gonna leave the nucleus and this is still the mRNA here. So this is the same thing that I just highlighted in blue. The tRNAs are these weird swirly looking molecules. That's like kind of actually what they look like. This, the bunch of dots, what's the bunch of dots? Say it again. The ribosome is this gray blobby, this thing. 
Yes, the, these are the amino acids. And the tRNA has the specific amino acid that it's supposed to, the specific dot. So once it's finished, once it gets to the end of the RNA, this string of dots is going to break off and it's going to be a protein then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the last codon on mRNA is actually going to code for stop. So on the codon chart, did you guys see how some of them said stop? That's actually a choice. And it basically means like scissors will cut off the protein, it'll be finished. Okay. So this last one, these last three, one, two, three, this will be a stop codon, which means release the protein. Question? You feel super smart? You should. Let me tell you what we're going to do now, but first let me stop my recording. Oh, come on. Don't be afraid.